In this lecture, we'll finally derive the Feynman rules for gravity. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the concept of second quantization of gravity. And we'll start with repeating some of these steps from our previous lecture from a distinct standpoint. So for our own comfort, I will also write down some of the equations here that we have been using before. So let's start with uh, assuming a weak gravitational field. So that would mean using this ansatz, g mu nu is equal to eta mu nu plus kappa uh, h mu nu. And now we have to quantize this field h mu nu. Note that this uh, decomposition uh, is not unique and that's due to the fact uh, uh, it's it's actually due to uh, GCT covariance right so what I mean is uh, the uh, the GCT covariance of the theory that it is a uh, covariant with respect to those GCT that preserve the uh, the condition that is the absolute of uh, this h mu nu is smaller or much smaller than one. So next step is to make this uh, make this uh, decomposition unique, and so do that we must do some. A gauge fixing right so we must do some gauge fixing and well uh, we know that uh, a suitable choice for that is uh, is given by the harmonic gauge which I have discussed in uh, in the in the last lecture as well and it is uh, in other words is given as g mu nu on the Levisavita connection uh, is zero, right? Now, note that this thing is exact in h mu nu, and it will reduce to how we have defined this gauge earlier. If you remember, I defined it as partial mu h mu nu uh, minus one by two partial nu and the trace of the field is equal to zero, right? And this was in the case of a uh, weak field limit. Right, now I'm going to expand uh, the Einstein's equations in the powers of h mu nu with the matter energy momentum tensor, right? Which is uh, which will be a capital T mu nu. So I'm just mentioning because we are going to introduce another tensor that is denoted by small t mu nu, right? So, well, we'll get into the uh, detail or depth of this in a bit. So, uh, well, then we'll have these Einstein's equations as g mu nu uh, is equal to 8 pi t mu nu. And we also have uh, we also have this that g mu nu is equal to r mu nu which is the Ricci tensor minus 1 by 2 g mu nu times the scalar curvature and this is your normal Einstein's equations right but now I'm going to use uh, this thing I'm going to use g i mu nu and uh, using this g i mu nu I'm going to indicate the part of this g mu nu uh, that contains the i power of the tensor h mu nu, right? So with that, then up to the up to the second order, I will have this uh, g mu nu. Uh, I'll have g mu nu up to second order would be g one mu nu plus uh, g two mu nu, right? Okay, so. With this, now I'm going to define a new tensor that is t mu nu, uh, which will be uh, which will uh, which is related to the second uh, part of this, right? So I'm going to define it like uh, one over eight pi g 
uh, where this g is the Newton's gravitational constant times uh, g mu nu second, right? Okay, now I, I'm going to use this thing that g mu nu one is just your uh, the Lambertian operated on your field h mu nu and using this I'm going to put uh, this uh, these uh, this equation or this tensor and I'm going to uh, I'll use this as well right this this thing and I'm going to put these two things in these two things right okay so if I do that I'll get uh, this Delambertian on uh, h mu nu which is just this uh, g uh, this thing right would be uh, well it's approximately uh, equal to 8 pi g times t mu nu plus t mu nu so now you can see a somewhat of a similarity between these both t mu nu's right and I'm going to well I'm just going to get into what these are so hence with this the higher powers of h mu nu they serve as a source of h mu nu itself which uh, uh, which also by the way is uh, is in complete agreement with the einstein's equivalence principle right now let me tell you what this uh, this thing these both uh, t mu nu's are or what they represent well note that this uh, t mu nu little uh, t mu nu uh, is going to provide us let me write it down over here this will uh, provide us uh, with the with the triple graviton vertex right and and just for uh, the sake of uh, being complete right I'm going to write this uh, in fact I'm not going to write it I'm going to copy paste this uh, uh, the uh, the value for this t mu nu just to show you what it looks like uh, let's see if I have it here yes here it is so I'm going, let's see if I can enlarge it a bit yes perfect so this is your uh, small t mu nu and in this expression for uh, t mu nu you can see that the last three lines are actually uh, uh, the total derivative right and the second and the third lines are going to simply vanish on shell right okay so now uh, what about this capital uh, capital T mu nu well the capital T mu nu it represents the tree graviton vertex right uh, or or you can say the tree graviton uh, correction uh, it, the tree graviton correction to the matter propagator to the uh, matter propagator and don't worry I'm going to get into the depth of this uh, this matter propagator maybe we are going to derive the propagator of course but uh, well I'm also going to uh, let me show you let me show you what a three graviton vertex uh, looks like and what a tree graviton vertex looks like right so for for a triple uh, graviton vertex it's something triple uh, graviton vertex will be something like three gravitons right and these wiggly lines in our case they represent uh, gravitons right they do not represent photons and one way you can tell that is uh, each of these uh, graviton uh, vertices uh, they at the ends they have these two indices so alpha beta and at this point it will uh, and, and not at this point uh, if for this one it would be 
uh, carrying a k prime momentum with a gamma delta and let's say that this is q uh, mm, let's call it mu nu right so this is what a triple graviton vertex looks like and if we are considering a scalar massive scalar field theory then in that case a tree uh, graviton vertex looks uh, something like uh, something like this right And this wiggly line, of course, is again the uh, the graviton. Let's say it uh, has momentum q, and these uh, lines have momentum p mu and p nu prime. Right. Uh, okay. So don't worry. I'm going to go into the uh, into the depth of these two diagrams as well. Right. Uh, well, I, I'll not talk about the triple graviton vertex in uh, this lecture. But we'll talk about it hopefully in the next one. But uh, let's come back to where we were, and that is uh, that is uh, to the second quantization, right? So uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to implement second quantization procedure for our field h mu nu, right? Okay. So to this end, one should write down. Uh, one should write down the general solution of the linearized equation of motion in the absence of matter. But uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's talk a bit about the polarizations, right? So for the polarizations, uh, polarizations of graviton, of course, uh, they are taken. Uh, in, there are two of the polarizations are taken into account. And they're uh, done so by using uh, the uh, by by introducing the polarization tensor, which is this epsilon mu nu, right? And it is uh, done so that this epsilon mu of uh, of this uh, lambda is equal to one over under root two zero comma one comma we have plus minus iota and zero, right? where these lambdas are just your polarizations plus and minus, right? So they can have, they can be either plus or they can be either minus, right? So uh, we must have this thing such that it satisfies the relations uh, that are uh, this epsilon uh, mu steric of lambda uh, times the epsilon mu of lambda is uh, is negative one and this epsilon mu of lambda um, epsilon mu of lambda is equal to it vanishes right so it's zero so with this one can form or one can shape a polarization tensor in such a way that e epsilon mu nu of lambda one comma lambda two is just equal to epsilon mu lambda 1 uh, times epsilon nu uh, lambda 2 right so uh, with this we can uh, well you have to keep in mind uh, some of your basic uh, quantum field theory and in the analogy to how we write down the uh, the or how we quantize the field a in QED, uh, I'm going to uh, use that and I'm going to quantize h mu nu. So I'm just going to now write down the plane wave decomposition of h mu nu, which is given as uh, the summation of uh, over lambda, which is plus plus or minus minus times the integral of d3p over 2 pi cube times 1 over square root 2 omega p and we have our uh, coefficients a uh, p comma lambda uh, epsilon mu nu p comma lambda and we have uh, the exponential negative iota p dot x and we have the hermitian conjugate of exactly whatever we have written right 
So we'd have a dagger p comma lambda and uh, this uh, this thing would become a positive iota, right? The exponential power would be positive iota. Right, so from here you can write down uh, the, uh, you can also using this as you do in, uh, as you do in your uh, classic, uh, in your, uh, in your regular or basic uh, quantum field theory, in your quantum electrodynamics, I should be saying, uh, you can write down the canonical Hamiltonian as uh, as you would in QED, right? So uh, we know that the uh, Hamiltonian is given as the integral over the 3x of t0,0, right? Uh, the, or it's something like this. But in our case, we'd be using this other tensor, uh, the small t1, right? And so we, we find out that if you do that, you get your Hamiltonian as sum over all these lambdas integral d3p over 2 pi cube times omega p a dagger uh, p comma lambda a times p comma lambda plus 1 by 2. So it's it's even similar to uh, what you do, what you get in your uh, normal quantum field theory, right? Okay, so now to treat h mu nu as a quantum field, right? So uh, that's what we want to do, right? We want to have this h mu nu as a quantum field. Uh, because that's what we have been doing since the beginning of the course. We are trying to look at the general relativity from a QFT point of view. And to do that, I'm just going to promote these coefficients a dagger and a to operators right and I can do that using the canonical commutation relation between the two that a of p uh, comma lambda uh, and uh, a dagger of p prime comma lambda prime this commutator is given as delta p minus p prime uh, delta lambda lambda prime right okay perfect so with this now I can uh, I can move on to uh, deriving the the propagator for 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 this uh, gravity right okay so let's start that and we'll start by expanding uh, the action which is s is equal to the Einstein's Hilbert action plus the matter action and we'll expand it to uh, to second order in h mu nu now it is fitting again to have this new field that we talked about that was h bar is equal to h mu nu uh, minus 1 by 2 eta mu nu and the trace of h and again we can do this because the trace of h uh, vanishes right so now with the, uh, the Lagrangian uh, in this scenario, we know is given as square root minus g times this, uh, the times the Lagrangian, uh, the Lagrangian density is square root minus g uh, of minus 2 over kappa squared, where this kappa is, kappa squared again is, it is 32 pi g uh, times the Ricci scalar plus the matter Lagrangian and of course we need some gauge fixing term, right? So to fix the gauge. So we can invert, uh, we can invert our, our Green's function, right? So uh, we can invert the operator, I mean, to have, uh, to have a propagator, right? Okay, so uh, to now I can have, well, I can have this term I can expand this first of all to second order in h mu nu because we know r is in terms of the metric field and uh, and metric field where uh, we have decomposed it into Minkowski and the perturbation h mu nu. So we'll, I'm going to expand it in the second uh, power or second order uh, in h mu nu and once I do that I get square root uh, well, uh, this thing square root minus g uh, minus 2 over uh, kappa squared times r. This is what I'm expanding. So it is minus 2 over 
kappa squared partial mu uh, partial nu h mu nu minus the delambertian on h plus 1 by 2 times uh, partial lambda h mu nu partial lambda h bar mu nu minus 2 times partial uh, partial um, lambda h bar mu lambda uh, times partial sigma uh, h bar mu sigma right and this is uh, and this is what you get right if you ex if you expand this up to second uh, power of h mu nu Right, so all you have to do is you have to write r in terms of g mu nu and then you have to expand g mu nu up to second order in h mu nu. So with this the uh, gauge fixing part of the Lagrangian also it is given as xi uh, partial mu h bar mu nu uh, times uh, times sorry times partial uh, partial lambda h bar lambda nu. Right. Okay. So note that uh, the the harmonic gauge that we have been talking about uh, uh, the harmonic gauge it it implies that uh, or it is that if you take your xi is equal to one. Right. As you might uh, remember from QFT, you have uh, something called a hoofed Feynman hoofed gauge. And uh, you have different kinds of gauges where you choose your xi to you give it uh, values one zero or something like that, right? Okay, so with this, then our Lagrangian can be rewritten as square root minus g Lagrangian is equal to one over two uh, partial lambda h mu nu uh, partial lambda h mu nu minus one by four partial lambda h, uh, partial lambda h, where this h is just the trace of the field h mu nu, minus kappa over 2, h mu nu, t mu nu. Again, note that this is the capital, t mu nu. Now, you just do some integration by parts, right? That's something that you do in your high school as well. And you do that to get the Lagrangian density as 1 by 2 h mu nu, the Delambertian operator on i, where this i is the identity tensor that we have in, uh, introduced in our previous lecture as well. So mu nu alpha beta uh, minus 1 by 2 eta mu nu eta alpha beta and times h alpha beta minus kappa over 2 h mu nu t mu nu perfect so now you have the lagrangian the next sensible thing to do is to have your equation of motion and upon using the euler lagrange equations you can have your equation of motion as uh, i uh, mu nu alpha beta minus 1 by 2 eta uh, mu nu eta alpha beta times the Delambertian uh, on 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 a Green's function which is in this case it's d alpha beta gamma delta which is equal to i mu nu uh, gamma delta right so now we are actually getting somewhere because if you remember we have already come across this exact equation that I just wrote over here, which is this equation of motion, right? Uh, we came across this in our uh, previous lectures and uh, and we solved it using the Green's function in uh, the X representation. So if you remember, we had, uh, we had this thing uh, uh, that G mu nu alpha beta is equal to minus one by two uh, eta mu alpha eta nu beta plus eta mu beta eta nu alpha minus eta mu nu eta alpha beta 
times the integral d4k over 2 pi to the power 4 times the exponential negative iota times k uh, dot x minus y over k squared right so we have come across this equation before as well and now we'll just assume the initial conditions that correspond to a Feynman propagator which is this d and those initial conditions are uh, d alpha beta uh, gamma delta of x minus y is equal to well you'll have two cases one is when you have your x zero is greater than y zero in that case you just have your g alpha beta gamma delta of x minus y and for the other case where you have x zero is uh, is less than y zero you have g alpha beta gamma delta y minus x right so now you use these initial initial conditions and you get your uh, your uh, this uh, Green's function as uh, iota d alpha beta gamma delta of x is equal to the integral of d4 q over 2 pi raised to power 4 iota over q plus iota epsilon this is iota not u let me just make that a bit clear perfect and times exponential minus iota q dot x uh, times you have this another uh, tensor that is p alpha beta gamma delta and uh, and this just this tensor it's just uh, and this thing that it is equal to 1 by 2 times uh, eta alpha gamma eta beta delta minus eta alpha delta eta beta gamma minus well you have a plus over here right and minus over here minus eta alpha beta eta gamma uh, gamma delta right okay so a lot of indices right but anyway uh we have uh, these two things now which are very important right so we have this and we have this where this p is just a part of your uh, Feynman propagator so these two are uh, uh, we have now actually we have everything uh, that we need to write down the Feynman rules for gravity so now let's just start to do that right so I'm going to start writing down the Feynman rules for gravity now perfect okay so we have derived them so uh, let's just write them now that first of all you have a propagator so you'll have a, a propagator so for a propagator let's say it's represented by this wiggly line and it carries some momentum q so that's just equal to iota p alpha beta um, gamma delta over q squared so that's what your propagator is now the next thing is is your is your vertex right these are the two important two most important things to write down the amplitude right okay so the vertex including the matter propagator it that it can be extracted from uh, from from the expression that is uh, kappa over 2 h mu nu t mu nu right in your Lagrangian so you can extract the vertex and that has this matter propagator when and the matter propagator corresponds to this capital t mu nu so for example consider you have a massive scalar field phi uh, and you know uh, for this the energy momentum tensor t mu nu is given by partial mu phi partial nu phi 
which is uh, this thing and you have another term which is minus 1 by 2 eta mu nu times partial lambda uh, phi partial lambda phi minus m squared phi squared right so for this uh, uh, the this energy momentum tensor the vertex uh, is given as well uh, we know the vertex would be this wiggly line and these two external lines uh, let's say this has momentum p mu this has momentum p prime nu and so this is given as iota kappa over 2 times uh, p mu p nu prime plus p uh, mu prime p nu minus eta mu nu times the product of these two p so p dot p prime minus m squared and there you have it these are your uh, Feynman rules for uh, for gravity next time I'll show you even a more complicated structure that is revealed uh, in the triple graviton vertex and in the next lecture we'll also as an illustration of how we can apply these Feynman rules I'm going to compute the scattering of two scalar particles by a single graviton exchange so we'll write down the amplitude of the process and we'll see the diagram we'll see the of course we'll see the diagram first and then we'll write the amplitude of the process and we'll also arrive at a very cool result from that amplitude